On the morning of November the 9th, 1888, an unspeakable act of terror was discovered. The body of Mary Jane Kelly was found lying in her London bedroom, her lifeless corpse having been disemboweled and mutilated. Her face had been slashed beyond recognition, with almost all of her internal organs removed from her abdomen. What's even more troubling is that this was number five in a string of brutal killings by an unknown man the press had dubbed Jack the Ripper. Welcome back to Curiosity, and today we'll be talking about the mysterious case of Jack the Ripper. Who was he? Why was he never caught? Were there more victims? We are talking about all of this and more, so stay tuned. From 1888 to 1891, the Whitechapel murders took place. These were a series of brutal slayings that happened in the Whitechapel neighbourhood, located in the east end of London, England. Altogether, 11 killings took place during this time, all female. The scariest part of these killings is the fact that each of the culprits remained unknown to this day. This includes the killer of the canonical five, the Canonical Five refer to a group of five women who were murdered by the infamous Jack the Ripper. They are viewed as distinct from the rest of the murders as their bodies were left in a very peculiar way. Each one of the victims were confirmed to be prostitutes, all found with their throats cut and their faces mutilated. But that's not all. Three of the victims had their internal organs removed from their abdomens. The disembowelment was done in such a particular manner that the killer is believed to have had some type of medical background. It was a terrifying time to be living as a woman in a poor environment. Before we go any further, it's important to understand what was happening in England at the time. In the late 1800s, London was extremely underdeveloped. Much of the British working class consisted of Irish immigrants and Jewish refugees from Russia. Due to this influx of foreigners moving into the country, neighbourhoods became overcrowded. Crime, disease and poverty were rampant. As a result, xenophobia remained prevalent among England's upper class. One of the central areas for poorer immigrants was Whitechapel, a small district in London's East End. Immigrants flooded the streets of the neighbourhood, increasing the population to around 80,000 by the end of the 19th century. Since there were so few resources, buildings became overcrowded and disease-ridden. While many of the men took up factory and maintenance work to make ends meet, most of the women had to resort to prostitution. Residents who were unable to find work resorted to violent crime. This only worsened the area's reputation, with Whitechapel soon being considered the most notorious neighbourhood in the city. The area surrounding Flower and Dean Street was viewed throughout London as the most dangerous part of Whitechapel. People were being robbed and sexually assaulted left, right and centre. On the occasion someone was killed, it was viewed as common slum behaviour, no different from petty crime. Police would only conduct limited investigations, if anything at all. If they had no leads within a few hours, they'd often call it quits. This made the East End a serial killer's paradise. If they wanted to prey on people with little threat from police, Whitechapel could serve as a haven. This is where the murders began. If you were living in Whitechapel, it was like being in a horror movie. Between April 3, 1888 and February 13, 1891, 11 women were found murdered throughout the neighbourhood. Since they all fit a similar profile, police gathered the murders into one single file. At the time, most of these women were believed to have been prostitutes. Since many of these killings happened in a short span of time, and all were within Whitechapel, police figured they had to have been connected. But five were murdered in a particularly brutal way, one that both the police and the press noted as cruel and sadistic. These became known as the Canonical Five. 
This is the name given to a group of women whose bodies were left in a similar condition. All five murders were committed in 1888. Their names were Mary Ann Nichols, found dead on August 31st, Annie Chapman, found September 8th, Elizabeth Stride, found September 30th, Catherine Edwards, also found September 30th, and Mary Jane Kelly, found November the 9th. In each instance, the victim's throat was cut and their body mutilated. The abdomen was cut open with the internal organs removed. This gave both police and press the idea that the killer was in the medical field, as only people of a certain education could find their way around the anatomy that well. At one point, a piece of human kidney was even mailed to the police. A surgeon would later go on to confirm that these murders were definitely committed by the same single perpetrator, but doubted he had any medical knowledge. While the women were all reported to be involved in sex work, Kelly was the only member of the Canonical Five who was confirmed to be a prostitute. Either way, the murders made the public go crazy, as the police just couldn't find a way to capture him. Remember this was the 1880s. We didn't exactly have CSI technology in this day and age. With body after body turning up, citizens grew frustrated and decided to take matters into their own hands. This is where the Whitechapel Vigilance Committee came in. This was led by a local builder named George Lusk. Volunteer citizens from around the East End began patrolling the streets at night looking for suspicious characters. The committee eventually pressured local authorities to put up a reward of 50 British pounds for anyone who came forward with information about the murderer. This was a lot of money back then and could serve as an incentive for someone to talk. During this time, hundreds of letters were received. As is the case to this day, any story involving a serial killer will attract wackos looking for attention. Both the police and local newspapers received countless messages from people claiming to be the murderer. While several of the letters caught the attention of the authorities, the most infamous was a message dubbed the From Hell Letter. This was sent in on September 27th, 1888 and received by George Lusk. While the letter was initially thought to be another hoax, Catherine Edwards' murder changed people's mind. Her body was found with part of her ear cut off, very similar to something detailed in the letter. The From Hell Letter is perhaps most famous for being the origins of the name Jack the Ripper, which began to appear in newspapers all over the world. Other names such as Saucy Jackie, Jack Sheridan the Ripper, and George of the High Rip Gang would appear in later letters. Over the years, the killings produced numerous suspects. Since he was never caught, and everyone linked to the murders and investigation are now dead, the identity of Jack the Ripper remains unknown. But various books, articles, documentaries, and movies have kept the case alive, with countless names emerging as possibilities. In fact, the public's interest in uncovering the killer's identity has led to a phenomenon known as Ripperology. At the time, London's Metropolitan Police investigated several men, many of whom were immigrants. Due to British xenophobia regarding foreigners at the time, the killer was believed by many to be Irish or Jewish. Since the killings took place in a working-class area, mostly on weekends and holidays, Jack the Ripper was first thought to be a working man living in Whitechapel. While the theory that he was a doctor or surgeon was eventually debunked, many held on to the belief that the Ripper was indeed an upper-class medical professional. People of Victorian England were often skeptical of modern science and medicine, so the idea that this murderer was a member of these institutions made sense in their eyes. Other men that have been considered include American serial killer H.H. H. Holmes and even Alice in Wonderland author Lewis Carroll. Some have even floated around an idea that Jack the Ripper was actually a woman, labelling the suspect Jill the Ripper. But well, the most interesting, yet terrifying theory, 
hasn't even been mentioned. Was Jack the Ripper a member of British royalty? Some historians claim the killer may have been Prince Albert Victor, son of King Edward VII and grandson of Queen Victoria. Albert, who died of influenza at age 28, was known to go through fits of insanity caused by syphilis. He's said to have possibly committed several murders during these periods, many fitting the time frame of the Ripper killings. That being said, there is to this day no evidence tying Albert to the Whitechapel killings. In fact, certain reports confirm he was nowhere near the neighborhood at the time of the murders. These days, the idea that Prince Albert was Jack the Ripper is mostly regarded as food for conspiracy theorists. Either way, the theory still entertains authors, journalists, and historians alike. History is full of terrifying people. Let's keep your curiosity going with a couple more videos, shall we? Here's what you need to know. Learn about the woman who spent 24 years in her father's prison. Or how about the untold story of Cleopatra, the most evil queen in history? Go ahead, click one, or better yet, watch both, and learn more about wicked people throughout history. Which serial killer do you find the most disturbing? Let us know in the comments below.